You're listening to Anywhere But Hollywood with Adam Campbell, empowering the independent filmmaker. Some of the nicest people I've met in the industry work in horror. I don't know if that's because there's something inherently therapeutic about horror or because there's people who work in horror maybe just don't take themselves quite as seriously as some others do. They're not going for art necessarily. Um, what, my guest today, Stephen Richards, is one of those nice guys. He uh, He's an actor. He's a producer. He's, uh, he's a cinematographer, director, writer, editor. Um, he's a man who's taken full advantage of the kind of opportunities that only come from working on really low-budget movies. Uh, here it is, my interview with Stephen Richards. I, I'm, I'm particularly interested in uh, the world of kind of low-budget horror and uh, you know, your experience in mm -hmm. it and uh, tricks of the trade. And um, so How long have you been? Well, maybe you could talk a little bit about your background. Uh, all righty. Well, um, I first got involved in filmmaking, uh, I guess, back in uh, 2004, maybe 2005. I'd uh, just moved to California from uh, New York. And uh, out of boredom, started taking some acting classes, mm -hmm. which I which I kind of liked. Uh, and from there, one of my very first uh, auditions, which I took at the time for a, um, a a locally made short film, which I did not get the role for, uh, but they took me on as uh, as crew because I was you know, I told them I'd like to um, uh, learn about that. Uh, and um, a, a lot of those people I'm still working with today, actually. And then the, the projects have uh, got a lot more uh, larger in, in scale while still being pretty small budget. And so this is uh, pretty much the same troop of people that you've been working with uh, all along since you've, since you've been out here? Well, uh, a, a lot of them are. Yeah. Actually, uh, I met the director of um, Werewolves and Heat, which we just finished uh, shooting about uh, a, a month ago, maybe six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I met him there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a lot of the same people uh, are still in our uh, circle of friends. So how big a circle would you say this core group is? How, how many people are in this core group? Um, hmm. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd say about four people. It originally started. We had uh, uh, Lance Poland, uh, who's who's a very uh, crazy, uh, imaginative uh, director. Vito Trabuco, uh, uh, his, his uh, bloody bloody Bible camp film mm -hmm. was um, uh, yeah, that, that's doing very well on the market right now. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, yeah, I'm still in contact with. Uh, with some of the others, we actually collaborated on a uh, anthology uh, film uh, uh, back around that time as well. And you're talking about slices? Uh, oh yeah, 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 slices. Yeah, yeah, um, it, yeah. The, the slices it was it was kind of interesting. Um, uh, it, 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 it was uh, a, a project that we put together uh, after a full length uh, feature film had fallen through. Uh, that we were going to be making a vampire uh, movie, uh, and for for one reason or another, uh, it um, it did not it did not materialize. the The actual film itself ended up uh, getting completed, but um, to um, uh, with slices, we decided to rebound from the failed uh, feature film, uh, and always had uh, different ideas for something that we wanted to do. Uh, and we decided that we were going to do them all and just see how it panned out. And uh, and slices turned out, uh, yeah, it, it, it turned out to be a, a pretty interesting film. It was the first one that we made, which actually picked up uh, distribution for, which we were pretty excited about. So you know, and actually, I was I, I did just this morning. I realized that Slices was available on Amazon Prime on my account, and it's really hard to watch it with a five year old in the house. <laughs> so oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm I'm sure it is. You, so, you actually watched it. So I no, I did not manage to watch the whole thing, but I kept stealing away and watching bits and pieces of it with a with a special uh -huh. focus on your section, which was also kind of difficult to find because I figured at the end credits that the credits might be in order of the film of the the segments, but they weren't. It was a different order. So Dead Letters was actually, I believe, the second in the film, right? Um, uh, you know, I, I, I've forgotten the, the placement of it, but yeah, it's uh, it, yeah, Dead Letters. It, it is in the middle, 
Right. And I had, I had a lot of stuff which I really wanted to work into it. Um, it was like, like including uh, just like little uh, like favorite things of mine, like uh, claymation. I, I, I mm-hmm. love that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do too. And so um, I thought, you know, like since the uh, the the character in that um, uh, played by Dan Lockerbill. Oh, actually, actually, we're using Dan Lockerbill actually, and. Werewolves and Heat. Oh. Uh, l- later this year, um, yeah, I, I said we'd we'd uh, filmed it uh, about six weeks ago. We still have the opening sequence to shoot, so oh, there's actually a little more to shoot, and, and Dan Lockable is in that. Um, but um, yeah, Clay Nation just seemed like like a really really fun way to uh, to really play into his uh, imaginary world where he. It, it, it was just something I I always wanted to do and yeah. was able to. So, so who did the animation on that? Uh, that actually, well, actually, I, I'm not in contact with uh, with them anymore. Um, it was a team of five people. Uh, uh, it took them about uh, two weeks to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I gave them um, a, a lot of leeway in what I wanted. I basically just gave them a description of the set, what the dialogue was going to be, uh, and the song, uh, which they had to lip sync to. Um, uh, a great song by um, Emmy, um, and uh, yeah, they, they they pretty they pretty much nailed it. So, I mean, actually, as I was watching that, I noticed that uh, one segment was filmed in Florida, and the others, I believe, were filmed in different parts of California. And I was thinking, I'm surprised you don't see more uh, anthologies, since I mean, essentially, they're just collections of short films, and everybody makes short films, but they're more difficult to market, right? I mean. So you, I'm surprised you don't see more horror film anthologies with just. Um, you know, I I, th- I think there are a, a decent amount of um, uh, a- 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 anthologies which are put out, maybe not not getting a lot of uh, distribution, mm-hmm. but that might come down to um, the I guess the, like the the quality of it. I, I guess at, at the end of the day, that that's basically what it comes down to. Um, and a, a lot of the anthology. Uh, movies which are put out are being made by you know the first time filmmakers like like, like we were pretty much at, at the time uh and maybe um lacking the um you know what what what's needed to really hook a distributor right, right. uh on, on it um so you so you did get dis- obviously you got distribution for well, I mean unless you put it up yourself on Amazon but you didn't or you actually uh, got distribution no. for that uh, yeah, we um, we shopped it around to several uh, distributors, um, uh, in- including Lionsgate, which is a, a very very long shot, and mm. um, and um, yeah, we we did not hear back from them. But um, yeah, we, we we sent it out to several um, different destinations, and um, actually on the day where we all collectively got together and, and basically said, no, okay, no one's going to pick it up. So let's try and market that, uh, market it ourselves, and you know, uh, the, the, we, yeah, we were actually contacted by um, Brain Damage Films on that one. They just started up their new, um, their, their new division, Midnight Releasing. They, they they actually didn't give us a lot of time to uh, get the materials to them. They were basically like, uh, hey, here's a list of what we want, and uh, and you have about a week to get it to us. Um, oh. Otherwise, we'll pass. Oh. So. Um, uh, we, we we had to make a um, a, uh, a couple of changes to the uh, to the credits to um, uh, yeah, because because they add a couple of things to like the final um, version of the film mm-hmm. and and then send it to them on a hard drive and um, and and that was the end of that. Now uh, l- luckily it, we had actually uh, prepared for distribution by, by by having all our like audio. Uh, tracks um, d- divided up separately, and uh, and so it, yeah, there was a lot a lot of that we didn't have to deal with uh, at the end, which was great. And where did where did they distribute it to? Was it to uh, did they go to iTunes and and? Uh, oh uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, well they they put it up uh, uh, on Amazon. It was available on store shelves uh, at, uh, at at several places, oh. um, and, and including FYI, I think it was for a while. Uh-huh. Um, Target stores. So this was um, uh, six years ago, right? Uh, yeah, but back in uh, 2005, maybe oh, 2000, more than that. Okay. maybe 2006 by this time. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, well, I mean, I mean uh, yeah, I mean back around then, I mean like uh, even things like YouTube are like still right. very new. You know, so um, right, right. Yeah, it, it was. Um, it, it, it's not like you could have 
you know, a great deal of internet exposure for your movie uh, at that time either. Yeah, it'll be interesting uh, to see how the how the how your current distribution uh, plan differs from what it was you know, eight uh, eight years ago. Something like that eight nine years ago. Yeah, well, it's uh, it, it, it's it, it's kind of interesting the way that's that's changed actually with um, with the quality of uh, film which we had picked up uh, like like back in two thousand five two thousand six. Um, a lot of things have changed uh, in the meantime, including like ease of access to equipment for filmmakers, uh, especially cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and uh, they had the big, you know, DSLR revolution, you know, where, you know, all of a sudden everyone can shoot 1080p and they can shoot it with like really okay. sweet looking uh, glass. And, um, and and uh, like computer editing has also come a long way, and 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 and, um, and even capturing audio, which is like very very important, mm -hmm. has improved. Now, if um, the, the and and all of that has made it really easy for like a lot of people to to make their films, but it's also meant that a lot of films are being made which maybe shouldn't. They're 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 flooding the market, yeah. I, I guess uh, essentially. Um, but distributors, they, you know, they can't pick up every film which comes their way. So now they're in a position where they can, um, you know, if, if they have so many films coming in, they can demand a higher level of quality mm -hmm. from, uh, even from, you know, like the ultra low budget movies, which they, uh, are looking at. And so a, a film like Slices, which we were able to successfully, distribute that back in 2005 I think it was that would not pass the Q&A uh -huh. from the same distributor uh, today you know, uh, that would be like oh that, you know, that's you know, you know we like your film we'd like to put it out um, here's a third party Q&A um, uh, that we want you to run it through on uh -huh. your own dime and, and, and if you you know pass all these like uh, quality tests and all that's good enough yeah, then then we'll go on to the next stage. So there are there are third party that third party agencies that will uh, suggest changes, like like suggest audio looping, uh, like looping certain dialogue. I mean, is there are actually agencies that do this? Uh, well, 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 yeah, and 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 they'll you know they'll, they'll make sure you, like your audio uh, your your audio levels are um, appropriate, that mm -hmm. your like video signals are like like pseudo, pseudo, uh, like like within broadcast uh, tolerances and the like. And they won't, and they won't, they won't fix them for you. But right. they'll tell you what's wrong, and um, and and you can you know, go and, and correct them, and um, and put it through the Q and A process again. Um, but um, but, but yeah, it, it's just interesting that like the the the, the distributors, which like which, which in our case took care of all of that and made the changes, uh, uh, just have so much material coming their way now. That they can push that uh, onus onto the actual filmmaker to make sure that that like level of quality is there before is, they even look at it. Is that a substantial expense going to those third party? Uh, what what do you call them? What do you call these QA organizations um, that do this? Hmm. Is there a term? I, I, for that? I, <laughs> there must be a term for that. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure there is. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I just. I wonder if that's. A, I wonder a, if that's a major expense. expense. Do you have any idea what they charge for that service? Oh no, it's only a couple hundred dollars. But oh, okay. um, yeah, it's. Um, I mean, but, you know, a couple hundred dollars. You know, when someone yeah. has made a movie, you know, for say maybe a thousand. Yeah, right. That's like a third uh, you know, of the budget. Or, yeah, yeah for someone even less. Yeah, that's a um, a considerable outlay. Right, right, right. So, um, so ha so when you made uh, slices. Uh, and, and you say so. The final product would not have passed muster with the uh, with the. Do you intend to do? You, do you expect to try to go with the same distributor? Or are you working with a different distributor now, like with the last uh, one? Oh, oh, we, we're 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 still in contact with them, uh, oh. and um, and, uh, and and you know keep them informed of uh, of projects that we're doing. Uh, some of them um, are not the kind of things that they're interested in. Um, you know, because you know they do have like a very specific like, uh, demographic that they sell to. You know, this is, they, this they is might, brain damage you're talking about, right? Um, uh, yeah, or you know, midnight releasing, um, and um, uh -huh. which is their label for this one particular um, line of films that they carry. So, um, how, how was Crackhor? Um, how was that distributed? Like in what uh, formats? That, 
uh, that um, uh, yeah, uh, that that film, Crack Whore, uh I think we shot that maybe two years ago. I think uh, no, actually, no, it must have been three. Um, uh, that I believe is is going to be available through distribution later this year. It actually got um, uh, it, it got bought out um, uh, outright uh, by an individual who is is going to be distributing uh, it themselves. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm not sure of the details on that, but from what I understand, it's it's going to be available, um, I think, um, on on video on demand later this year. I see. And so I, I would imagine there are less less opportunities to have actual physical DVDs printed up these days, right? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. The um, it, uh, it, the, 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 uh, it everyone's really excited about. Um, uh, video on demand because you know, there's a lot of um, a lot, the 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 costs are um, a, a, a lot less. You know, you don't have to worry about um, you know printing the discs and shipping the discs and shelf space and uh, and, and there are fewer places to um, to buy them from or even like rent them from. Right. Um, uh, but you know, video on demand is. Um, that is pretty huge. I, actually, I um, uh, that, that actually reminds me. I, I think Slices was uh, sent out for uh, video on demand um, uh, on some international markets, huh. and I, I'm not sure the details on that. But um, uh, I, I, I just noticed that on um, the, um, the 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 payment. Um, the, yeah, the, the payment updates that we get every six months. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, so so that's kind of nice. So, yeah. I mean, if you don't mind my asking, are, are you, do the films at least break even generally, or is it? I mean, are you able to break even with but you know between budget and distribution you know, and sales? Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, slices has not yet made its money back. Mm-hmm. Um, it's close to it, actually. It, it must be very close to it. Um, but, but, but it's, it's, it's taken a while and, um, but, you know, like, obviously the distributor, you know, they take uh, like their, uh, their slice of the pie before we see, it, um, do you, happen to know, do you happen to know what that slice is? What the percentage uh, yeah, is? Uh, oh, with, uh, with, uh, midnight releasing, it was, uh, it was a straight up 50%. Wow. Um, uh, and, and, and then they also had like their additional costs, which they need to recoup. Um, before we start splitting the money evenly as well, so I mean, I mean the 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 movie did make a, a you know a, I guess a, re, a reasonable amount of money uh, for them, uh, you know but, but but you know they they had to you know uh, cover the cost of you know like like the artwork you know you know for, for the cover you know they they wanted to make a whole bunch of changes to to our stuff and that's well, you know that's you know kind of expenses. Uh, expensive. Um, there's various costs that, that they need to recover first before uh, before the money starts being split. So, so in that sense, yes, the the movie has definitely made its money back and more. Mm. Um, but but as far as the filmmakers ourselves, um, we are close to, I guess. Do you feel having... Do you feel that it's? I mean, I I really don't know much about the distribution business. Is it worth going with a distributor from your perspective? Well. Um, I think uh, uh, I I think it is. Uh, a lot a lot of people would would say that a like a distributor is you know they're taking like a, a large like piece of your profit and the like. But you know, but at but at the same time, I don't have time to market um, my my own film full time either. So um, and they do they do um, put resources into, resources into publicizing it, not just not just putting it out there, but actually publicizing it as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, not so much these days. Um, but uh, back when it first came out, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there was there was advertising uh, built into that uh, cost that they needed needed to recover. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, over time that gradually died down. And um, and then, uh, as I mentioned, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure if they did any additional advertising, but. Um, yeah, it somehow ended up in the VOD uh, market, which is a very nice surprise for for all of us. Nice. So, you want to talk a little bit about uh, about about werewolves and heat? Oh, sure. Um, okay. Well, werewolves and heat. It's 
um, you know, directed by Lance Pollan. Um, I've worked with him before uh, on um, on several projects. Uh, yeah, including uh, Crack or yeah, and uh, yeah, he was also back on Slices. Um, yeah, it's a uh, a low budget exploitation horror slash comedy, um, and it, it took us a long time to get made. Uh, it, 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 we started on it shortly after, um, yeah, shortly after we had finished Crack War. Uh, and we shot the uh, beginning scene, the middle scene, and an ending scene uh, here locally at, at, one, at one particular bar with uh, Ron Jeremy. Um, and um, yeah, we, we got that uh, successfully all uh, taken care of, and then all of a sudden, um, the money which was there to make the film suddenly wasn't there anymore. Um, and, and I won't go into why, but um, you know sometimes things happen. Yeah. So um, the the movie uh, it, it, yeah, it, it came to a um, it came to a stop for um, uh, for a while while we, we figured out what to do, and then um, we, we had some of the actors uh, uh, you know like like move out of town, move to different states, um, and it um, yeah we we had to do additional casting. Uh, for it, it was, it's uh, and, and and actually a lot of script rewrites mm. as well uh, to uh, to accommodate the actors who were uh, no, no, no longer with us. But um, uh, so, what's the general? What's the premise of the film? Oh, the 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 premise of the film: when we have uh, three college kids getting out of town, going away to a. Uh, a, a remote spot in the desert, uh, mainly because it's a cheap place to party, and uh, they uh, uh, have a, they they put on a local house party, and not having any luck with the ladies, they decide to hire some local uh, prostitutes to to come and have a good time with them, but these prostitutes turn out to be a little more uh, than they would appear. So, and I think yeah, we can, we can uh, guess yeah. what that, what they are. Right? Yeah. Well, Presumably well, werewolves, yeah, well, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It's uh, a <laughs> yeah, spoiler. It, 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 yeah. It, 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 it's very, it's very lowbrow humor, which is fine. Yeah. Um, because there's a, there's a market for that, and, sure. and that's exactly that's exactly what the the, the movie is made for. Mm-hmm. So, so that the people who enjoy that kind of uh, material are really going to like it. There's a lot of a, a lot of boobs. There's a lot of blood, <laughs> and, um, and 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 it's funny. It, 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 it really is. Um, so, do you feel like and, uh, because it's so it's so precisely targeted to that market? Do do you feel fairly confident that it will reach its audience? That it uh, that it'll satisfy the needs of that market as you've designed it. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. The um, um, and yeah, it, it definitely will give the demographic what they're looking for. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, yeah, I hate saying demographic; it makes it sound so impersonal. <laughs> sure. um, but, yeah, but, but I mean, at the end of the day, like a film really has to be a product. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, no matter how like. You know, like like personally like invested uh, like like whether it was that you are yeah you can't keep making them if you're if you're not you know getting a return on that um, and, and clearly this was and but this is an example of of a film that was designed from the start to appeal to a specific demographic right uh yeah, well well yeah, uh, and, yeah or and, audience and that, that, call them an audience and and, and, that, and, that, and that goes into some of the casting as well and then mm-hmm. like I think I mentioned we had uh, Ron Jeremy. Right. Um, uh, yeah, he, he, he's a lot of fun to work with. We uh, uh, worked with him earlier, actually, on um, Bloody Bloody Bible Camp, uh, uh, where um, uh, and, and, and he, you know, he, was, he was very happy to, uh, uh, to to come back here for you know to play a completely different character. Uh, yeah, and in in some of the casting, um, we we actually um, decided to uh, push it a bit uh, and and m- maybe get some like non-traditional uh, actors uh, in one of the roles mm-hmm. and so uh, we had contacted um, uh, some some adult actors because mm-hmm. we, we really wanted to play up uh, like 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 the nudity uh, sure. in, in this 
Um, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, we, we have, um, and that, that's how Sarah Vandella, uh, ended up, uh, playing actually like the lead werewolf, uh, in, in this particular movie, which, which is kind of very, very different from, uh, you know, from, from what you normally, uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of the best way to put this. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, it, 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 it's very different from the you know from the normal kind of films that she uh, she, she works in, but sure. but it, it is um, it, it, it's something that that she's always wanted uh, to do, mm-hmm. which, which was which was great for us. How do you how do you approach some of these like these cult figures who like someone like a Ron Jeremy or or a Reggie Bannister that was in um, Alice, uh, uh, B- Bloody Bloody B- Bible Camp. I mean, do do you just go through their agents or is there kind of a small community of people who are working in the exploitation film world? Is well, it just people um, know people? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, people know people. Uh, I mean, and like, and, and Ron Jeremy, um, uh, he got involved with uh, Bloody Bloody Bible Camp. Um, uh, well, well, yeah, he, he, he was easy enough to get hold of. Uh, you know, it's literally, you know, uh, you know, hey, come work on a movie. Uh, <laughs> Reggie Bannister, um, uh, he 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 had worked on another film that one of the producers on that, Shelby McIntyre, uh, had had been involved with, and he, he was like, um, once again, talking just a phone call, hey, do you want to come work on uh, Bloody Bloody Bible Camp, which was conveniently being shot in the same town that he lives in. And uh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so all of a sudden, uh, he came on board for that, um, which made it um, uh, a, a great for us when we needed a, um, a a fantastic actor for uh, one for the road, uh, which is a uh, Stephen King Dollar Baby uh, film that was shot. Uh, R- R- Reggie stars in that. You guys um, are Dollar Babies too. I, t- this evening, yeah. I'm, I, this evening, I'm pre- I'm uh, recording a Dollar Baby podcast with four Dollar Babies. Oh, okay, cool. cool. <laughs> I didn't know you were one as well. So we'll yeah, have have oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it, it's in it's in the IMDb uh, thing there. I, oh. I think it's mentioned in there. But um, yeah, yeah, but but, but well, you know, one of the conditions, you know, you know, of the Dollar Babies is that. Uh, you know, you, you can't sell your movie, you can't sure. put it out, you know, you, you can't even stick it up on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you can make it around at film festivals. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so that, um, that, that's why really no one has seen it, I guess. But um, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that, that was a that was a great um, short film. That was um, um, uh, yeah, yeah, produced by Tim Sullivan. Um, uh, uh, from, um, yeah, he, he's known from his uh, 2000 Maniacs or 2001 Maniacs, mm-hmm. um, um, and um, uh, oh yeah, yeah, they're, they're, you should do one. They're, they're great. They're great. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so interesting. It's it keeps on coming up whenever I talk to people. Uh, the the mm-hmm. whole dollar baby thing. Um, yeah. So anyway, I just find it fascinating. That's its own little community. And there's, a, I don't know if you know, but there's a Facebook group of Dollar Babies as well. I don't know if you're in there. Yeah, no, but, no, I didn't know that. Yeah. But yeah, I should, should join that. Yeah. Actually, I'll, I'll send you a link to it. Actually. Oh yeah, I'd love, I'd love to yeah, see it. Yeah. I, um, so if let's say that I wanted to start, uh, you know, my own low budget movie. What, one of the things that always comes, I mean, I, I was working on a little bit of low budget stuff in um, in East Co- on the East Coast, mainly web series, which had mixed results. But um, how are you? How are you, are you? Are you using casting services? Or are you just advertising on Craigslist? Or what do you? What are you, are you renting out a place? Do you ha- do you guys work out of an office? Or do you just sort of? I mean, what, what are the practical logistics of of starting to cast something like this? Uh, well, a, a lot of it is. Um um through people you know or you know they're not suitable maybe they know someone so mm-hmm. i mean uh craigslist does enter the equation at, uh, at, at some point it's just not the best and it, well it's it's craigslist so you know but uh you know at, at, you you end up there eventually but if the casting can be done through through people that you know or recommendations that you know uh that helps in a lot of ways, like especially um, uh, understanding the whole, you know, like it's an ultra low budget mm-hmm. kind of thing, you know, like we'll have money for your gas. Right. Great. Uh, you, know, you know, if we can pay you, that will be totally awesome. You know, but, <laughs> it, it, yeah, but we're generally not able to really afford like casting agencies. Sure, sure. Uh, 
uh, or um, and you have small casts in general anyway so i mean i imagine a lot since you're saying you know it's just mm -hmm. people you know i mean that could probably take care of most of the casting right there right uh it, yeah yeah the um especially if you uh, work uh, with the same people over and over right and uh, and sometimes you do end up uh short like our uh amazing sound guy um he he has actually been um shanghai twice into uh <laughs> acting roles on set uh -huh. Just because, um, you know, like, like sometimes someone doesn't show up, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, actually, we, we had that happen on, um, Werewolves and Heat. I mean, like, we're shooting out in the desert because it's cheap. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it's like a two and a half hour drive, and, uh, the, you know, like, the, the, the cast actor on the day wasn't able to make it, you know, and so it's like, well, yeah, we're not going to be able to replace him. <laughs> you know, from, uh, you know, it's not like we're, you know, you know we're, it's not like we're shooting in Los Angeles. We're be, you know, give us fifteen minutes and we'll, you know, m m I'll have my neighbor who's an actor come on by. Right, right. Um, but uh, yeah, so yeah, uh, our sound guy, Paul Ward, great guy, um, very accommodating. He'll do, he'll do sound and also uh, pick up the slack if there's uh, an, an actor role to fill. Right. My, my, one of my first jobs when I was in high school was to work on a trauma film in New York. I grew up in New York City. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. I worked on uh, the film. The film was released as Stuck on You, and it was filmed as a movie. As, uh, the script was called Split. And I think I was uh -huh. like 15 years old or something like that. And it was, it was a blast. I mean, my job was to make hot dogs. Um, I made paper mache caveman clubs. You know, it was just, it was a lot of fun, you know, and I have, I have a real fondness uh -huh. for that kind of, that scrappy, low-budget uh, aesthetic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, um, but there's a lot of do-it-yourself do kind yeah, of yeah. Uh, uh, stuff required. So, yeah, so, so Werewolves and Heat is in the can now, right? It's all been filmed? Yeah. Oh, except well, for well, the little need, bits that you have to... Yeah, you, we need to film the opening sequence. Right, uh, right. And, um, and, we, and, and that's going to be in the can... By the end of the year, actually, I need to talk, talk to Lance about uh, getting that moving again. Mm -hmm. And so you, um, and then, so when do you expect it to actually be complete with post and everything? Well, uh, complete with post, that is, uh, you, know, you know, I'm I'm not sure. Sometime I'm, next I'll, year. It, it is going to be sometime next year, right. and um, I'd probably say towards the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean. Um, Obviously, right now, um, uh, uh, like it, it's, it's being edited, um, and um, you know, so, so a, a, a lot of that kind of work is being done. But uh, um, uh, yeah, Lance likes doing a lot of this work himself. So, um, and you you, yeah, wear, but, you wear many hats as well, right? So, which what are your responsibilities on this film? Uh, oh, in this film, uh, wow! Yeah, I, I was even cooking actually while we're <laughs> out in the desert that was yeah well yeah uh, yeah somehow i ended up being uh given the budget for uh all of the food that we're supposed to be eating so uh -huh. <laughs> um yeah, yeah out by uh 29 pounds um uh yeah anywhere from like 14 to uh to I think it was, uh, 14 at the most, I think it was. Uh, mm -hmm. Cooking for them for six straight days. That was we had breakfast, lunch, dinner, crafty, the whole nine yards. And that's on top of, you know, keeping everything else straight, too. Right. Uh, doing a bit of camera work. And, um, and, and yeah, and then sitting down with the last at the end of the day and going over the shots list and what did we get and what do, what, what do we need to make sure that we don't miss tomorrow. So yeah, this is uh yeah we had it we, we, it was a uh, it was a pretty hectic schedule out there. So you're um, an actor, you're a cook, you're a cameraman, and I know you edit as well. I know you did some editing a lot. Did you did you do all the editing and slices? Uh, I I didn't I did not do the segment which was shot in Florida, but okay. uh, but, but yeah, I I edited the the rest of it and. Um, uh, that was that, that was a lot of fun. That was uh, that was actually pretty challenging too. Actually, the um. I mean, uh, I, I I thought I was pretty good at editing, and then there was there was one of the segments which was almost straight improv, hmm. uh, and all of a sudden it's like, well, my you know like like the normal basic rules of editing are kind of thrown out the window here. Um, you don't have enough coverage of all the different dialogue, right? 
Uh, well, well, yeah, and, and, and like all of the takes are very different, and um, and it, it, that was that was actually really really challenging. I mean, it, 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 I think it came out okay uh, uh, in, in the end, but um, but yeah, editing improv material is um, with one camera, it, presumably. Uh, there was one camera, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's very challenging. Uh, yeah. So. Um, yeah, but, but you know that, but that's the other great thing. You know, it's like you're you're always like learning and improving uh, as, as you go. So um, the one thing I learned out of that is, do not volunteer to edit improv material. That, that's what I, <laughs> right. that's, that's what I learned out. Of that. Never volunteer to edit improv material. Right, that's a good rule of thumb. <laughs> mm-hmm. So do you expect to do any of the post work on uh, on werewolves? Uh, on uh, post work on that, I, I might do some. Um, I, I think I'm doing some of the CGI blood. I think that's going to be it. There. I mean, there's a lot of practical um, uh, blood work in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, as well. we had a really cool um, special effects uh, lady. Um, uh, she, yeah, she, she's uh, working on the uh, Teen Wolf uh, TV show, and we actually had her for a day. Uh, out, out in the desert, and uh, I think I think her her stuff is going to be pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, but, but yeah, we, we we try to work in as much practical stuff as we can. But right. um, yeah, but uh, but yeah, there's going to be I think room for like a little CGI enhancement along the way, and I think I'll be taking care of that. Yeah, yeah. Is there I, one thing that does occur to me now? Is there is there kind of a um like a, a what am I trying to say? Like a a, a subculture of people who make low budget horror like where everybody knows each other in these circles kind of thing or is it just sort of i mean do you find that the same people cross each other's paths in the in the low budget horror world yeah i i, I think so i mean uh, the i mean they're you know, people are always looking for like similar minded people mm-hmm. um and is it region- and- is it regional or is it just do you do you find that you cross paths with people like say in New York in the same industry, or is it just sort of just the L.A. horror film people that you cross paths with? Uh, for, uh, for for me, it's pretty it's pretty much been the um, uh, Los Angeles area mm-hmm. um, uh, people. Uh, although a lot a lot of people I know um, do a, do a lot of work and are involved with uh, East uh, East Coast filming. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, they're, they're constantly flying out there, but I've never really uh, uh, got involved with that. So, uh, yeah, well, I, I guess there are both local and like more more expanded circles. Right. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, do you, uh, I I know that from time to time you you plug your your website. You sell uh, cute little stuffed animals. <laughs> stuff ah, so feel I, free to I plug anything you want to plug right now. It's, it's fine. I, I don't have that anymore. Oh. That was, no, that was, that was, yeah, you're talking about the, uh, the Asylum Hollywood. Yes, website. yes, yes, that was it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I sold hundreds and hundreds of like these, these like, they're, they're like like officially licensed, like right. little like, uh, like, like three and three quarter inch um, uh, little vinyl figurines. Uh, made by Funko, the, the Funko, the Funko Pop vinyl figures, and um, uh, yeah, I, I had had that business for about um, uh, for for about a year. It was great. It was awesome. Um, and uh, uh, but I, I, I was not. It, it was just. It was taking up so much time. Oh, and um, and uh, yeah, I, I was. I was. Yeah, I, I was. I, I, yeah, I had to make a choice. So uh, <laughs> that is. Uh, that's not there anymore. It had so. to go. That's too bad. So I'm sorry yeah. to hear that. So no, uh, if, if there's anything else you want to plug here, feel free. Um, or if you uh, have some way that, uh, do, you have, do you have some, where can people go to find out more about you or the films you're working on? Uh, well, uh, uh, I, I do have a Twitter account if people are interested in that, which is uh, at Steve Axe, which is kind of hard to say. Steve <laughs> Axe. Um, and... Um, uh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I need more stuff about me. I guess I need to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I've spent so much time working on other people's movies that it's, it's like, yeah, I can. I need to have something about me put in there. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. All right. Well, yeah. Th- thanks so much, Adam. Bye-bye. Great show. Bye-bye. Bye bye. So once again, I want to thank Stephen Richards for. Uh, for stopping by today. 
if you're interested in uh, looking into the, the movies we were talking about during this conversation, uh, there was there was Slices, which I know is available on Amazon currently on Instant Video, uh, Bloody Bloody Bible Camp, which is also available on Amazon Instant Video, Crack Horror is available on. Actually, hmm, I'm not sure it is available, but if it is, I'll uh, I'll put a show I'll put a link up to it in the show notes. Um, and the movie they're working on right now, finishing up, is Werewolves in Heat, which, uh, as he said, they're expecting to uh, to wrap up post on that sometime next year. So, a little while before we can look for it. Maybe we'll do a little follow up when the when the movie's completed. And once again, thanks for listening, and I will uh, catch up with you next time. Till then, this is Adam Campbell from Anywhere But Hollywood. Visit AnywhereButHollywood.com and join the community. Fill out a profile. Share samples of your work. Search for collaborators by skill or location. AnywhereButHollywood.com. Empowering the independent filmmaker.